Ever since Darwin, biologists have understood the importance of the tree of life metaphor. In Philomath, we will learn how to infer that tree and how to use it to understand biological processes. Philomath is made possible through a career grant from NSF, as well as ongoing support from the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. It's not quite using RaxML. So RaxML is a fast program for inferring likelihood-based trees. So if you Google it, you get to this web page. Um, click on RaxML. It has a citation to use the code download, the manual, and some helpful tutorials. Okay. Um, so let's go get the code. So click on the GitHub link. Okay. And here is the code. Now it's open source, so you can actually look through and see how it's all written. Okay. Um, and let's see when it was last worked on. Right. Four months ago, ten months ago, two years ago. Okay. Um, you can download it various ways. You can clone it for GitHub or things like that. Most people just want to use the zip, so let's click, uh, grab the zip file. And if you're on Windows, you can download the compiled binaries yourself. Um, if you're on a Mac or Linux, you have to compile them on your own computer. It's actually easy to do. So I've downloaded that. I can go to my downloads and look at it. I can double click it to unzip it, or I can use gun zip on the command line. Okay, so here is XML. Our code, just like it's on here. I'll go to my terminal program and I'll go to my downloads folder and look around. And here's the zip version and here's the original version. Oh, here's the unzip version. So let's go into that folder and look around using ls and I see all this stuff. There's nothing here that looks like I can use, right? Well, it's just the raw source code. So I can look inside and you know, see what Roxanel does for search if you wanted to. So here's you know the raw, raw code. And if you know C, you can understand it. If you don't, you can have trouble with it. Um, most users don't care about this, right? Um, but it's nice to know that you can see it. If you have a question of how Roxanel is doing something, you can dig in and see exactly. Get the type of Q to quit that. All right, so open source software is often written like this. You come, you get a bunch of bar, right? And say, what, what, what do I do? It's usually a readme. So here's the readme. So I can do less and read that readme. And this tells me how to compile into Linux, also welcome to Mac. Now, one nice thing about RaxML is it can take advantage of ways to speed up its computations. Right? So on, on a computer like this one, um, we actually have multiple cores, which means you can run multiple different programming uh, programs in parallel um, and they won't interfere with each other. Okay? And so what RaxML can do is it can run on several of those cores at once, making your computations a lot faster. Okay. Um, there's other versions, there's other speedups they have in here too. Okay. Um, what we're going to do right now just a plain vanilla install, it's using this plain make file. I'll explain what that means in a minute. But you could try doing some of these others and it might be faster. Okay. And then the question in the order of you know two to four fold speed up or more on your computer. Yeah. So that's pretty good. So we can get um, the make file we're going to be using. Okay. And this is basically a set of commands to the computer to tell it how to go from that text version of a program we could look at to a compiled binary. Right? So like if you open like Microsoft Word, the binary program is all written in computer language. You can actually see what it does inside, um, but it runs fast. And so we can do the same thing with RaxML. Okay, so we'll do that here. And it's very simple. We just do make. Which make file do we use? We have to specify by using a flag, makefile.gcc, and hit return. And so the first, it cleans up any things we made, anything we made before. Okay, now it's compiling it. So it's taking these, you know, .c files and making it .o. So compiling it into this uh, object that's going to compile together and we'll combine together at the end. And so wait a little while. And done. So did it work? Did it not work? Um, it doesn't. You know, this make file doesn't say, "Yay, it finished." We can look here, and we see RaxML HPC. And now if I do ls with coloring, you can see it shows up as, um, a, you know, a, a, well, it's not kind of file. It's a, it's a file we can use. So if I want to run it. I could do something like, you know, pass the path to it. They'll give you where it is. 
and it will open and give me an error, right? I haven't given it any information. I could do something like this, and it gives me the version and who to thank for this, right? Um, and a lot of programs will really like that, such that if you do dash V, it'll give you information about the program without actually running anything, okay? And so I could run it from my desktop by, you know, going to my desktop and then telling the computer where RaxML is. So I could do um, users, Omera, downloads, uh, stand RaxML master, HPC, dash V. And I'd be able to type so fast, so I use tab completion. So when I start typing S-T-A-N and hit tab, there's only one thing that can be, can be so it just fills in for me. So you can do that. I give you the same information. Great, so I ran RaxML. Um, that's a pain to type every time, right? And I've been using other programs this whole time. I can just type ls, and the computer knows what to do. It, it, it automatically uses the right program. And the way it does that is by looking in the path. So the path is a list of folders the computer knows to look in to run, to run programs in, right? So if a program is, is stored in op local bin on my computer, um, the computer will use that first. If it's not there, it'll look in here for a program with the right name, it'll look here for a program with the right name, look here, and so forth. Okay. So if I copy RaxML into one of these folders, um, then rather than having to type the full path to RaxML, I can just type RaxML HPC anywhere on my computer and it'll work. So let's try doing that. Let's see what happens. So CP, X, go back to the right, 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 right folder, so CD, Documents, standard, oh, sorry, downloads. And now I'm going to try copying XML HPC to, and where should you copy it to? So these folders are used by something called Mac ports, which helps people install things. Um, user bin is used by your computer, you shouldn't mess with it. Um, it says this. So I'm going to store it in user local bin. Let's see, let's see what happens. And it's copied. Okay. And now I can try running it from there. So I can just, if it just, you know, let me go to the desktop, like a new window, and you know, go to my desktop. Now if I type RaxML HPC, it works. All right. So even though there's no RaxML here, um, I'll show you, you know, my desktop folder is empty. The computer knows where to go to get RaxML. And that's how to install RaxML. Um, so to understand how to use it, you should look at the, look at the manuals or watch another video.